Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the Brady Bang Show. And today we have a very special guest uh, from the well-known string brand called Thomas Dick Infeld. Uh, if you're a string player, you definitely know it. The guest here today is Attila. Uh, Attila, could you just please tell everyone what you do and um, what your role is? Hello. Hello, Brad. Thank you for inviting me to this uh, interview. Uh, I am product manager at Tomasic Infeld and I am working in the company since last year. Um, before I was working uh, at the iron uh, maker shop, Marcel Richters, and I get quite a lot of experience also before doing acoustic stuff, um, designing acoustic boxes. So uh, Tomasic Infeld hired me because they know I had uh, quite a lot of experience about um, instruments and also experience with strings and uh, it's a great job great work here uh, i was involved in the development of the version solo strings i learned a lot about the function of strings and um, in of course i have to, one of my very important um, tasks is also to bring the information from the musicians to know what does the musician the professional player need or what does the student need, the beginner. We are doing strings for beginners. That's our newest product is Alpha U. And um, it was very important to find a, a string which helps the beginner to have a good sound, a good response, and to improve the sound quality of, of the instrument. Um, before the people used the dominance for a yeah, very long time, and uh, now we try to find a second option to have a wider range of, of possibilities, to offer a wider range of possibilities to the musicians. And uh, yeah, I, I love the job. It's exciting. I have uh, the possibility to work with the violin makers, with the musicians, with the orchestras, and, and I'm coming back, back with the, all the information and um, go on with the research and to go on with uh, looking for, for the new for new products. That's awesome. I've uh, been a big fan of Thomas Tick Hinfeld strings as well, actually. Uh, I've also used dominant strings for most of my studies, and I think there's just solid strings. You can't go wrong. Um, yeah, I want to ask, I mean, straddles of bats, very interesting, is... Okay, two things I want to, first thing I want to touch on is how a string is made and the second thing is what do you look for in a string to make it better? Um, so I guess the first question would be, can you tell us the process of string making? And you did tell me before we start that everything was, you know, processed by hand, which is, I think that was very interesting. The process of making a string is really, uh, really complicated. Of course, the, the, the material, the flat wires, the round flyers, the cores, the, the, the uh, uh, how to say, the, the um, rounded materials, they are all uh, prepared by machine. And the uh, tolerance is very, very uh, narrow because very, very small, almost... Uh, uh, not how to say uh, things which we cannot see even on the microscope can already change the sound. So the sound of a string is a little bit like a miracle. We are uh, observing vibrations. We are observing and analyzing different kinds of uh, uh, um, oscillations. But in the end, it's really hard to say from the technical point uh, what a string should do that it has a really nice sound and. Even when we say, okay, that's a nice sound, it's a very personal approach. We, there are different uh, characteristics which are, um, how to say, um, accepted by the majority of the people, a warm singing note in the sound. And of course, this is connected with the interaction of different oscillations or behaviors of the string. You know, we have the uh, torsion oscillation, we have the orbital oscillation, we have uh, the, 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 the horizontal oscillation, and the mixture of these all kinds of oscillations, of knot points, of 
of yeah of, of the thickness of the strings makes the special quality. The process, uh, of course, is very complicated because uh, you have, of course, the old style. You have the, the core, which can be a solid wire, or it can be a twisted core. Um, this this gives a completely different uh, sound. The first one is much. Uh, how to say it's it's much stiff, more stiff. The other one is much more flexible. You know about our product. Maybe BioCore is it's a, it's a twisted uh, BioCore. It's, it's very flexible, and this gives, of course, a different um, sound. And on this, they are put different layers of materials. Okay. Of course, we have uh, sometimes some uh, glues. We have some damping materials. Uh, there are some synthetics uh, on violin strings. Uh, the cores, or normally, uh, except of the E strings, are from uh, synthetics. So on the old uh, dominant, we have pellon, nylon pellon. Yeah. Uh, uh, now we use uh, more uh, modern uh, materials, harder and more complicated. Uh, also, uh, the mixture of different materials. So this is also a pattern from Tomastic that we can use two different uh, synthetics which are mixed together or, or uh, how to say, uh, um, twisted together. Yeah. And this gives completely different uh, sound quality. Mm -hmm. uh, the last time we use uh, for the, our uh, premium products PE key. So PE K. It's uh, very important, synthetic. And uh, for the viola strings, we have also the mixture, or we have the, uh, synthetics or solid uh, steel cores. For cello, we use mostly uh, now the, the steel cores. So we have solid steel or on the spiral core, the twisted materials. And uh, this is a very complicated process because you have to know how many layers you should do, which materials you should take. When you have more heavy materials like tungsten, silver, the steel gets, the string gets much uh, thinner, and this change the, the response, the, the sound quality, and then you have to see, okay, how which uh, dimensions should have the flat wire, uh, how many tension it should have, and. That's the process of handmade them because the, all these layers are put together uh, on a machine, of course, but they are put together by hand. So all these things, pressure and, and, and tension, is done by hand. And the way of making the string, that's the difference. So it's, it's just like, <laughs> I don't know. So it seems like it's just plain instrument, right? Everything is pressure, everything is all up to skills. You know, you kind of learn to develop these skills. I mean, it's pretty cool. Um, it's yeah, complicated also. Yeah, yeah it sounds really complicated. I guess. Well, okay. Um, I could go into all the materials, but I think we'll be here for a while. I, I guess I want to go to the next question: Is how? What do you look for in the string? So, um, are there certain combinations? you know that are timeless that already work such as i'm guessing the dominant strings um and what components do you kind of add in experiment with so how does all this work in the process you know it's the experience makes the difference uh, we had a lot of experience with the synthetic materials we have been the first one doing this this kind of strings and uh, our or the company's uh, goal was to have a string which keeps the quality a long time. And uh, it's not the, the first week which is important for the sound. No, we want to keep uh, this, this, how to say, uh, the um, parts like uh, the response, uh, the, the, how the strings keep the tune and, and the, the lifetime, yeah? This should all be one big, how to say, uh, <laughs> I miss the words now in English. That's fine, that's fine. Uh, you mean, maybe I try again. The yeah? response of the strings uh, is, a, yeah? is all, I mean, as a violinist, I can definitely vouch for 
how we we're always very picky about if we how what type of response we want from the strings when we put the bow onto the string, right? So yeah. how quick the sound yeah. comes yeah. in, etc. We have this slip and stick effect. So in the moment we put the uh, the bow on the string, the rosin uh, sticks to the uh, string, and the string is uh, starting to turn, and and it's like it's teared, yeah. Yeah. And in the moment the 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 force is too too strong, the string slips, and in the moment it slips, we have the first of, uh, how to say vibration, yeah. Uh, so the, the the this process of changing slip and stick gives this oscillation of the string and this the moment the installation is um how to say going on the string in a regular pattern mm -hmm. the response is good the moment uh, it's uh, uh, irregular and we have inf interference ah, in the okay. in this uh, uh, process of, of oscillation then the response is bad so, so it's yeah oh, sorry uh, sorry to cut you off so i'm just so what makes the patterns go uh, different Ed. is it a balance or the different amount of material on each string or do you know uh, of course it's also the material when you take aluminium which is very light and it's a good, good a grippy surf surface yeah. the response is always better in some kind mm -hmm. but it's there is it's a mixture of material of uh, the surface of the kind of material mm -hmm. but also from the, the core if the core is too stiff, the response is bad. If it's too soft, it's also bad. So we have to find the, the balance between the, the, the stiffness and the yeah, amount of layers which change the behavior of the string. Mm -hmm. And the best is the moment you have, how to say, the, the, the impulse from the bow, that the vibration is going immediately to the other end of the string. And, and is reflected in the same way. And this is a combination of these two kinds of, uh, of, of oscillations, like orbital and torsion uh, oscillation. So if this works, the string works. If not, then it's really a problem. And we can change this with the uh, damping materials, with glues, uh, with the dimensions of the flat wires, of the round wires. Uh, it, it's always uh, uh, looking for different behaviors of materials and it's really hard to explain in words uh, it's easier to show in 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 pictures in videos uh, what change in the behavior when we change different parameters i see okay for, for those of you listening actually uh, uh, when you when i when you let's say draw a sound on a string with a bow the string starts moving left and right almost like a circular motion right and yeah it's, it seems it's you know the strings we get it seems consistent you know depending on the speed of weight if it's consistent if your bow is consistent then this strings move consistently um you know yeah the thicker the string is there the biggest the problem but on the other hand we have the problem with the whistling on the e strings on, on oh, violets yeah. Uh, this is also often a problem because of the grip, it's also a problem because of instrument, but uh, there are some tricks with which you can get rid uh, of, of this whistling. Uh, on the other hand, there are some materials which are more, yeah, how to say, complicated and uh, don't respond so quick, so like gold strings, they need more time, thin strings are medium, uh, so the, there are different uh, surfaces which change also this effect. That's so cool. Um, okay, well, the strings. Do you have a, I guess, out of all the strings in, you know, Thomas Dick and Feld, which strings are you kind of, do you lean towards or are you most proud of? To tell you the truth, I am impressed by many products here and I am so impressed by the different qualities the string can produce. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the rondos, which are the, the violin making, better strings we call them. They, they are done uh, for violin makers that they can offer it to the musicians. Uh, you cannot buy them in shops, but they are amazing strings, uh, clear, open, 
with a wide range of dynamics. Okay. And then we have the Peter Infeld, which is a very strong string. And I think in Asia they love the strings. They are very uh, resistant also to humidity. Yeah. Um, we have then the warm kind of string. This is the Vision Titanium Solo. It's a round string. It's a singing string. Each instrument needs something different. There are instruments which which loves one kind of strings. Others needs a completely different kind of string. It depends from the construction of the instrument. You need sometimes more pressure to give an, a strong impulse to the instrument, to a strong resonance. Sometimes or very often you, you have to uh, take off the pressure. It's all, many things is about balance. So you can improve the sound of the instrument when you change the, the pressure on the E string and you should change it in very lo low um, um, degrees. Mm -hmm. to, to see what is happening with your instrument. And sometimes 50 grams less can open up your instrument completely and sometimes 50 grams more can kill your your instrument. Yeah, the yeah. resonance. It's very, it's really crazy. Yeah? So, and, uh, yeah. So I was just going to say, I mean, one question I think someone would ask is, but how do I test all the strings if I can't get all of them right now to test my instrument? Is, is there... so? If there is one string you to for someone to choose, which one do you think is the safest option to go with for someone that necessarily can't get all the strings right away? I mean, I know which ones I like because yeah. I've tried a lot of strings from Tom Stickenfield. Uh, to say the truth, I, I was I would uh, choose the Rondo, the Rondo. and a, a second the uh, Peter Infeld. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Rondo okay. are really around us and they are so open and so fresh in the sound and so colorful uh, i never find the instrument where it they didn't work they work on all instruments how do you spell the name rondo R rondo like rondo like the form oh, okay. in high rondo. Rondo, yeah. rondo r o n d o yeah and this and for, yeah uh, these are the strings that you give to violin makers am i correct Yes, yes. They are very close to the Peter Infeld, but I feel they are more pure, they are more uncomplicated, they are, yeah, just open-hearted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, on viola, I, I like very much the Peter Infeld. They are strong strings with a lot of this deep texture we need for a viola sound, mm -hmm. uh, with a very good response. Uh, actually, we are just uh, Mr. Klaner, who is uh, the chief of the technicians. He uh, is developing a new chill, um, viola strings, and uh, I heard already some prototypes. And I think it's a very interesting development. It's a very rich sound we are aiming for. Yeah. And for the cello, we have now the full set of version solo, and I believe it's the very best cello strings I ever played. Whoa. Uh, really, really great. <laughs> That's so cool. Oh, wow. That's, that's, I've got so many questions to ask, but I know we're running short on time and I need to, um, a few more questions actually, just before we wrap things up. Where do you think, I guess, the future of string making will go to in terms of, um, let's say, like products, uh, in terms of material? Uh, is Thomas Info, I mean, you might want not want to disclose these things, but if there, is there anything? else that Thomas Infeld would want to expand to, you know, in the future as a company? Um, it's hard to say. Of course, we are uh, doing research and trying out different new materials and uh, there are new patents made uh, by Thomas Dick Infeld. Uh, one of the goals is that we are taking away the, the pressure. We want to reduce pressure. And in, in order to, um, how to say, to um, um, make, give the instruments a longer lifetime, don't destroy the tops because the more pressure you give, yeah, the more you, you um, yeah, destroy your instrument in the end. Yeah, because in the old times, they had, they got strings, they had very little, little pressure. Yeah. But with today's techniques, we want to find this, this combination of very little pressure and 
of very open sound and still a strong sound, but the most important is the quality. We want, we want to find a, this really perfect Thomastic sound, which in the tradition of Thomastic, it's, it's easier to imagine. Yeah. And uh, I think we have already very interesting things because the violin strings, which are now tested, they have really little pressure and they have a special construction, special core with different materials. And uh, this gives really an amazing sound I never heard before. It's really impressive. And uh, the goal is now to find the methods to stabilize everything. And yes, it's, it's, it's the way of research that you find uh, the right combinations, the right amounts of, of each of these uh, spices. Yeah, <laughs> you <Yeah>. this week. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I mean, I look forward to that as well. I mean, really love to experiment with new strings. Okay, one last question before we wrap yeah. things up is what advice would you give to everyone that's you know using these strings is how like sorry let me rephrase what advice would you give musicians to do to look after these strings um to make sure they don't you know break as quick or they last the, the duration they should be lasting for um the first things i'm thinking about is quite easy when you change the strings look on the places where the string touch the bridge, the, the saddle, uh, the uh, tailpiece, um, everything should be round. Yeah, you, maybe okay. you can ask, or the musicians can ask the violin makers that, that they have a look on these places, that they are not too uh, hard angels, that the top of the, the, of the, the bridge is really rounded. And the very best is when you change strings, give a lot, a bigger amount of uh, um, graphite. Graphite makes the, the shifting of the string uh, much easier and it uh, prolongs the lifetime. Uh, on the other hand, there's not many things to say. Uh, there are different uh, possibilities. You can clean a string. Uh, normally, we don't advise anything in special, but uh, I advise normally this, this um, string oil, which is quite good. But of course, never clean it with alcohol. Alcohol is bad because the alcohol is, can go inside uh, the, the, the string after a time. Uh, then this can destroy yeah, the, the, the different layers. But in, in the case of our strings, they are very durable. They are very uh, resistant to, to sweat and to, to uh, playing process. So I think the musician should not be worried about this. They, if they just uh, keep the special places at the saddle, at the bridge uh, with graphite, the strings will hold on for a long time. So the lifetime will be quite long. Love it. Okay, so keep things round, around the edges so they don't break. Yeah, one, one which is yep. important, that when the, the uh, strings are cut too deep in the in the bridge, that's not good for the string. This is also one important part. It's good to take a pergament, yeah, to pergament to put something or or restore the wood that the string is not too deep uh, inside, uh, cut inside the bridge. So this how, is really good. okay. How would you see if it's too deep? You mean if the bridge is almost halfway over the string, or the string should be really quite on the surface or maybe 30 percent of the diameter of the, of the string could be in the bridge but no lower it should not be deep dig, digged in in the in the in the bridge got it and if yes put a pergament put some uh, a mixture of, of wood and glue and you can restore it with super glue you can restore it and the sound will be much better again okay so i'll wrap things up now uh, thank you so much for jumping on the podcast. I'm sure everyone listening would have got some great insights on it. I mean, I certainly did, especially with how to look after the instrument. And also, it's fascinating about all the different materials you guys use and the process behind it. I think a lot of musicians, we don't really see what's going on or know what's going on. You know, It's also more than a tool, it seems. It's a lot of hard work that goes into, I guess you say, the soul of the strings, right? Yes, yes, that's true. Yeah, it's the soul. Yeah, so I encourage everyone to try these strings. 
And if they haven't, I really recommend it. I definitely use these strings. Um, yeah, I mean, is there anything else you want to say? Um, just enjoy and dream. Yeah, <laughs> enjoy it. our strings. Yeah. Um, if any, if there any uh, are problems with it, or any questions, uh, if you need an advice, the people can contact me. They can contact me on my email account. They can find it uh, find it on the um, company's homepage. My name is Attila Pastor, and uh, my, uh, um, my email address is uh, pastor at thomasticinfeld.com and you will find it on the internet uh, page. And I am open to any questions. I uh, can help with advices. And yeah, please contact me. Fantastic. Well, now everyone knows how to contact you. Um, once again, thank you so much for joining, and I hope everyone can. You know, explore these new strengths. Thank you, thank you, thank you also for the possibility to present the strings and t talk, tell some details about the process of making them, and uh, enjoy playing. And I'm so happy that to hear it, so that you like the strings. And yeah, let's keep in touch. No worries. <laughs> <laughs>